How about now? Contact. All right. I ain't too smart. You know that, right? Amen. Yeah. All right. Uh, there again, just welcome everybody. Just thank each and every one being here tonight. Appreciate everyone coming out tonight. A lot going on, a lot of sickness, people in hospital. But the Lord's still on the throne. He's still in control. He's still answering prayers, and I thank the Lord for that. Amen. As far as any new prayer requests, do we have any new prayer requests or any updates on anything? Yes. And that was Kenny what? Booker. Yep. He was a Hancock, right? Well, Cockman, yes. Okay, okay. Any other? Other prayer requests. Of course, just to continue to remember Eddie Wicker. Uh, he's still at Chapel Hill. Possibly may move him down a step, but not sure yet. I'll know more after uh, church services. And of course, Lib's sister, Pam, she's down at the hospital having some tests done. So just remember her in your prayers. Uh, Scott, and Tim, uh, Scott and Trina. They're doing better, so continue to pray for them. Uh, we've got so many. It, yes. Okay. Uh, Marcel Gano family, he was a builder out of Southern Pine. Some of you may know he uh, had a heart attack unexpectedly. They come unexpectedly, right? So we never know. Age don't have nothing to do with it. Any others? Of course. Yeah, yeah, I know. I was just getting ready to mention that. Uh, once again, the family just wants to thank everybody for support and all. And it's good to see Brother Craig back and CJ and Colby. So just continue to pray for them. Any other prayer requests? I probably forgot a few. I try to write down everything as much as I forget. Yes, and the one that we have one anonymous, and I know there's probably some that's unspoken in here tonight, but the Lord knows them all, so remember those in your prayers. And of course, I know there's several people that's battling the COVID and been through the COVID and flu and all kind of things are going around at this time. Any others? If there's no others, uh, we'll have a word of prayer, then I'll uh, have a few announcements, then we'll have a congregation song, and then we'll have the offering. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we do come to you once again, just first and foremost, Lord, for just thanking you, giving you praise, Lord, for allowing each one of us to be back here tonight, Father. And Lord, it's such a blessing, Father, that as I always think about that as I'm able to get in my car and uh, you provided a way to get here and the means, Father, we gas to get here and you provided such a, a wonderful sanctuary and building facility here at Emmanuel Baptist, Lord, that we can just drive to, Lord, and I just 
so many times never want to take that for granted, Lord, because there's some today, Father, Lord, that wasn't able to get up, some today that went on to be uh, with you, Lord, some of those that's been separated from you, Lord, and, and those that are just would love to be in church tonight, Lord, and on Sundays but are unable, Lord. Let us never take that for granted, Father. Now, Lord, we want to lift all these prayer requests up to you, Lord. Father, each name that was spoken by the lips tonight, Father, we know that you hear them even before they're spoken, Lord. And, Father, we want to lift them up to you now, Lord, and ask that you just continue to work in a great and mighty way, Lord, there, Father. Lord, for those that are in the hospitals even now, Lord, we know of some that was just mentioned, Lord, that are having tests and procedures done. We pray once again for them, Lord, that you would just wrap your arms around them, Father, and just be with them, Father. Give them the just the presence of the sweet Holy Spirit and the comfort, Lord, only you can, Lord. We pray for those doctors, Lord, and nurses, Lord, that look after those patients, Lord, and the ones that we love, Father, that you give them the wisdom, Lord, to just look after them, Father, that how they need to be looked after, Lord. Father, we thank of uh, those uh, that was mentioned t today, Lord, that, Father, that just uh, in so many ways, Lord, they, they just need you, Father, uh, Father, in financial ways, Lord. I know of some right now this week that I've talked to, Lord. I just pray for them, Lord, and you know those names even now, Lord, and pray for them, Lord, and just lift them up to you. Those that continue to fight that dreaded disease, cancer, Lord, we pray that you would move in a mighty way there, Father, in their lives, Lord, and we thank you for how you've moved now, Lord. Lord, for those that have lost loved ones, Father, just in the past days, Lord, we thank you, Father, for your peace and your mercy, and I've seen some testimonies come out of those lives, Lord, that just shows, Lord, your goodness, Lord, and how you just there, Lord, to stick us closer than that brother, Lord, to give them that peace that passes all understanding, Father. Lord, so many other requests tonight, Father, we just want to just give it all to you, Lord, and know, Father, you're in control of those measures, those things that are going on, Lord. Lord, we thank you once again for just your marvelous grace and mercy, Lord. Father, help us to continue, Lord, to go forward for your honor and glory here at this church, Lord, and just show the love of Christ, Lord, to all those that we meet, Father, each and every day, Lord, and the love of Christ to each other, Father, here in our church family, Lord. Father, we thank you once again for how you just bless so much, Lord. We give you all the praise for it now, Lord. And we ask that you just be with the remainder of the services tonight, Father. Lord, and I just thank you once again. And just ask all us in Christ's name. Amen. As far as announcements, just remember Sunday. I know we've had several that's going to be coming out of watch care here at the church. So please be here for that. I've contacted all the families. And then we'll be having a, a baptismal service uh, Sunday morning also. So just be in much prayer for those services. Thank the Lord how he continues to touch lives, continues to save souls continues to bring people here to the church and want to become part of the church family here. And I just thank the Lord for that. But I just pray that above all things and everything that we do here, always that we draw, draw closer to the Lord. That's what it's all about. So I just thank the Lord for that. So just be in much prayer for that. Uh, also, I want to thank everyone for the, uh, there again for those Samaritan Purse boxes. I think we ended up with close to 80 or 81, something like that. Was that what it was? 81 so remember just thank the lord for that and, and, and the service we had praying over those uh, sunday night uh of course the angel tree is still back there i don't know if it's empty if it's still got angels on it but if you want to you got five left if, if you got an ornament you want to donate to the church new or used uh, they want to keep that decorated so you can bring that uh, here to the church for that is there any other announcements that i may have missed okay the ladies that are, yes. Okay. Do you have a time on that or anything? Yeah, yeah, frying crickets. So they're just having a the service there at the funeral home. Also, the ladies that signed up for the Pastor Miles event. I need to talk to a few of y'all about what, what you want to do, when you want to go, okay? And we'll, we'll set a date. I know somebody won't be, you know, I know we got Thanksgiving coming up and Christmas, but we need to go ahead and get that taken care of. Also, I'm looking at doing a Pastor Pals Day. We're getting all the kids together. If you can get a list of me that we've got some shut-ins that we can go Christmas caroling one night, one evening with the, to go to their houses and sing to them, please see me about that and give me those names on some. We're going to try to do that in December. Don't have the date yet, but I thought that would be a good outing for our kids by going and singing some Christmas carols to our, our, our shut-ins. So just remember that you know, and a few other things coming up and going on. Okay, is that it? Okay.
All right, it's time if we could have our ushers come forward for the offering tonight. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you again tonight. Lord, just praising you and thanking you for this day. Lord, we thank you for getting us up. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Lord, we thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. Lord, Lord, we just pray that you'll open our hearts to receive the word tonight. Lord, that you'll just uh, bless Brother Mike. Lord, as he brings forth the, the word tonight. Lord, we pray that you'll bless this offering to the furtherment of your kingdom. Lord, we just praise you for everything said and done here tonight. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Also, one other prayer request, uh, Brother Ronnie Parker's brother was had a procedure done, I think a knee replacement, so remember him in your prayers. That was uh, Ronnie's brother. Uh, he wasn't here tonight. Uh, Sister Cindy called and said she couldn't be here tonight, so I'm thankful that Jenny was here, and she said that she would fill in for us uh, to play the piano tonight, so I just thank the Lord for that. So, so at this time, we're going to take a hymn book, and we're going to turn to page 176, and we're going to sing all four verses as there is power in the blood. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Page 176.
may be seated. One other announcement I forgot to, the week of Thanksgiving, remember we'd be having service on Tuesday night and not Wednesday night, so remember that. Well, this time we have one a special from Jenny. Just wanted to thank everybody first for all the prayers. It's been a rough few weeks, and we've definitely missed being here. Um, so I really thank you all for everybody that reached out and prayed for our family. And we are so, so very happy to be back in church tonight. I hope my voice will hold together for this song. <clears throat>
Yes, sir. Go ahead. A lot going on, brother. But God is still so good. Thank you, Jenny, once again for that song. I tell you what. Yes. Jerry. If you got your Bibles, turn to John chapter 1. We back into the disciples tonight. I'm thankful for that song. Or I tell you what, just, it's, God is so good. Through the struggles, through the heartaches, through the good times, through the bad times, God is still good. Amen. In the days ahead, whatever we may face, guess what? God is still going to be good. And, but as great as he is now, guess what? We're going to look at a few words tonight. With this uh, disciple here, there's greater things ahead. And I'm so thankful for that. Greater things are, are ahead. So thank the Lord for that. So the thought of the night, we're going to be looking at Nathaniel. And I want you to just think on those words there. Greater things than these. Greater things than these few questions tonight who brought you to the Lord Jesus Christ sort of think of those thoughts now can you remember that well on the reverse who have you brought to Jesus think about that who have you talked to about Jesus who are you thinking right now that the uh, that the Lord has allowed you to witness to and to bring to Christ I can think of some right now in my mind. And now they too have become followers of Jesus. It's very important that we've got to be witnesses for Christ. Uh, I mean, like I said, that's eternal. That soul's eternal. And, and, we, and we've all got a job to do. Amen. So this evening we have come to, there again, to our study of, of the disciples, the original 12 here, to the man who, brought, who is brought to Christ by who last week as we seen? Philip. Philip brought Nathaniel here. And all of the list of the disciples throughout the gospel, uh, as, we, as we see that record that we find, we always see these two here connected, Philip here and Nathaniel. It's like these two men, are, are my, you might say, are in service, are inseparable, but you might say, inseparable from each other. Uh, they're friends. And then guess what? They become what? Fellow believers and workers. And that man by the name... There again is Nathaniel. Now, if you compare Scripture with Scripture and you look at all the lists, Nathaniel is also known as Bartholomew. So that's, that's, a, that's a little note for you. Think about that. Nathaniel is also known as Bartholomew when you see those two mentioned together. So don't get that confused. If you hear Nathaniel and you hear Bartholomew, that's the same man. And we first meet him here in John chapter 1. You remember here that Philip, he has come to know the Lord as his Savior. And in verse 45 here, we see this. Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. So we see here in verse 45, and, and we talked about Philip, you might say Philip's witness uh, last week. And I love this awesome word here, found. I'm glad that I had a heavenly father that found me. Are you tonight? God is so good. God is so good. Philip finds Nathaniel here and he says, we have found him. Are we telling people today that we have found him? Are we pointing others to Christ as we should? So, so he's seeking others here for Christ because he has been sought. 
He has been sought here. He wants others to be found. How bad do we want others to be found? It's a sad testimony today, and I can tell you, in many of our lives, we will point others to other things that all around us that, that you want them to get involved in, but we don't point them to Christ like we should. And I'm guilty of that. But he wanted others to be, to be found because he, is, he was lost, and now he's found. And then here in verse 46, it says this, And Nathanael said unto him, Can there be any good thing come out of Nazareth? And Philip saith unto him, Come and see. I love that response there of Philip's, that the response that Philip has here in that last part of verse 46 there. He says, Come and see. Verse 47, Jesus saw, Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. Uh, Verse 48, Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. So even, even before Philip had even talked to Nathanael, guess what? God had done seen him. Even before anybody had ever talked to me, God had done seen me. He done knew me. Even before anybody had talked to you, he had done seen you. Hallelujah. Verse 49 we're going to read up. We're just going to finish the, a few more verses up here. We'll just finish this chapter out. We'll read on down. Verse 49, Nathanael answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, we know that means teacher. Thou art the Son of God. Thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Behold, because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou, thou shalt see, remember these words here, see greater things than these. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Bubba, lead us in prayer, if you would, brother. Amen. Now in this brief section here of, of, of Scripture here, we see this brief episode. We see an episode here we find here at the end of chapter 1 here is really the most that we really know about the disciple here known as Nathaniel or Bartholomew. And I love the thought that really all we know or, or from me about him was his interaction with Jesus here. That's important. We need interaction with Jesus. We need interaction with Jesus every day, not just on Wednesdays and Sundays. Amen. Uh, uh, that the only thing that he's remembered for is the, his conversation here with Jesus. As a matter of fact, his name doesn't show uh, up uh, again until after the resurrection. Did you realize that? You remember when uh, Peter went fishing and he took that, that group of men with him out on the sea and then Jesus appeared to them out on the sea, seashore there in John chapter 21. That's where we find his name mentioned again. Well, Nathaniel was in that group at that time. But this is the only other time here that we see him or find him. Uh, and, and for sure, I say the most details we're given by the sweet Holy Spirit of him, of this man called Nathaniel here. But what I did learn, and I think what we can learn about this particular disciple is just what I learned. I'm just going to share a few things with you, what the Lord spoke in my heart. Let's just look at a few, few things here. First of all, notice that there is some doubt in, his, in him. In other words, that word skepticism comes out. Remember when he hears of a man out of Nazareth who is the Messiah. He immediately questions what? Here in verse 46. He says, And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Do you see him questioning right there? He's sort of a skeptic right there, a skeptic. But before we get too hard on Nathaniel tonight, we have to understand Nazareth at, at, at that time. 
because Nazareth here was a little agriculture village, less, probably less than 250 to 300 people within that village. And really it was not known for its highest morals or the best things in that time and day uh, at this particular instance. Nazareth had almost become, you might say, known for its vile things, its bad things, not so good things at that time. So here's this pure, you might say, Jewish mind here in Nathaniel, thinking, really, all that that's going on out there in Nazareth, are, are you telling me, really, could it be that this, the, the Messiah here could come out of this place, Nazareth? And the question is yes, because of God's grace. No matter where we come from or whatever side of the track we come from, no matter how we was raised up, by God's grace, he can use any of us for anything. Amen. And I love that there. But my answer to that is, yes, Nathaniel. Not only can, can a good thing come out of Nazareth here, as we see, but God came through Nazareth. God came through Nazareth. And I'll just tell you tonight, when God comes through a town, everybody's going to know it. Amen. I'm thankful tonight. When God comes on the scene, everybody is going to know it. Hey, I, and I'm thankful for that. But there here we see in this man here, there's this immediate, you might say, doubt. There's a little bit of a skepticism here from this disciple that God is going to use here that really can anything come out of this little town here uh, uh, of that magnitude? A spirit here of questioning in Nathaniel. We good at questioning, ain't we, a lot of times, ain't we? And I'd just like to say that. That's not all bad either. I love, these young people that I spend time with, they have a lot of questions. Now, a lot of them make me sweat. But you know why they ask those questions? Because they want to learn. Amen. They want to learn. And I'd say not all qu questions is bad. In fact, questions to me cry out for answers. Don't you want some answers? I do want some answers. I want the answers and better understand God's word. That's why I cry out to the Lord, please, Lord, help me understand this portion of the scripture that you've got here, that, Lord, please let it come out of me how you would have it come out, not by what I, I, I think it is. Questions do what? Questions can lead you somewhere. And Philip, of course, not knowing how to answer the questions, did what? So many times I don't know how to answer the questions, and I'll say, let me think on that, let, I'll get you an answer. You know what? I just need to simply bring them to Jesus, as Philip did to Nathaniel here. I don't got all the answers. I don't have all the answers, Nathaniel, but guess what? I know somebody who does. I don't have all the answers for, for those so many that I uh, come in contact with. But guess what? I can point them to Jesus, Marty. I can take them to Scripture here, and we can find out some answers here. Just simply, Philip here brought him to Jesus and said, Just come and see there in verse 46. Do you see that in that last portion there? Come and see the Lord Jesus yourself. If you come to him tonight, if you come to Jesus yourself, not just heard about it, but truly come to him. He's saying, come on, Nathaniel, here, here for yourself, brother. Come on, uh, come on here. I have found him here. Come to know him for yourself. Hey, all the questions end at Jesus. Every question that we might have ends at Jesus Christ. Do you have questions tonight? In other words, we're living in a world filled full of doubters today. There's doubters everywhere. There's skeptics everywhere filled with questions. What shall we do? What can we do, preacher Mike? Lead them to Jesus. Just bring them to Jesus. That's all we can do, friend. He's got all the answers. What does this world need more than anything? It needs Jesus Christ. And we need Jesus Christ, all of us. So the first thing I see here, we see Nathaniel and his doubt and his skepticism that I see in the, the, that verse right there when he's saying, there, can anything really come good come out of here of Nazareth? But then we see here, secondly, one thing I noticed here that surprised me that I noticed was notice his sincerity. And I'm not saying this. Jesus is saying this. Listen, if anybody knows a man's heart, Jesus does. Do you know that? In fact, another scripture says he didn't need anybody to testify what was in man. He knew what was in every man. He doesn't know what's in us. You know that. I may can hide some things from you. You may can hide some things from me. But the bottom line, Jesus knows it all. Knows it all. He, he knows everything. In verse 47 there, we see it says, When Jesus, uh, it says, 
Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and saith unto him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is what? No guile. That sort of spoke to me right there because when Jesus is talking here, he's saying not just the Israelites. It's not just your lineage here. It's not just your family connection here. But here, God, Jesus here, he goes all the way to the heart. He goes all the way to the heart of Nathaniel here. He said that there is no guile in this man. He's saying, hey, this is a sincere man. Yes, he may have questions. He may have questions here, but I see in this man here, not just this Israelite. I don't look at his lineage. I don't look at his family's connection. He says, there is no guile in this man. He was saying, this is a sincere man. This man is not trying to impress. He's not putting, you might say, on a facade here to try to disguise something. There's many people disguising today, friend. You know that. He's saying here, this man here is the real deal. What can people say about me and say about you? Is Mike the real deal for Christ? Huh? Is Karen the real uh, deal for Christ? I love this. You see how that there is both, you might say, that doubt and skepticism here and also a sincerity here. And let me just say that people asking questions uh, are many times the most sincere people. I've been a lot, around a lot of people that's asked me some questions. They just wanted some answers. And they was truly sincere about the things because especially dealing with their spiritual relationship with Christ, they wanted to draw closer to him. Think about that. So some of the people that has the many questions, they are the most sincere people. So don't hate questions. I got questions, and I want to come to God's classroom. Because that's where I'm going to get the knowledge that I need. That's where we're going, all going to get the knowledge. We just have to bring those sincere seekers to the truth. And where is that truth found? Not in my opinions. It's found in God's Word. That's where it's found. And let the truth work in them. And when this man here met Jesus for himself, the Holy Spirit of truth touched him. Where there was some doubt there, maybe, maybe he was a skeptic right there. Guess what? The Holy Spirit of truth touched him. He opened his eyes because Nathanael said there in verse 48, Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. He said, How do you know me? How do you know me? Where, where do you know me from? And we see Jesus' answer there in verse 48. Did you see that? I love that word there before. God is always previous. Do you know that? He's always before me. Before you ever saw him, before I ever saw him, before you ever thought about Jesus, before I ever thought about Jesus, he knew you. And he knew me. When I was conceived in my mother's womb, he knew me. Even before I was conceived in my mama's womb, he knew me. And he knew you. He drew you and me unto himself. I thank the Lord for that. And so Nathaniel here responds in verse 49. Nathaniel answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, which what means teacher here? Thou art the Son of God, Thou art the king of Israel. I'm here to tell you that he has come a long ways. From verse 46, as we see here, as he saith, can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? He's come a long ways from his doubt. He's come a long ways from his skepticism. Because here in verse 49, we see his statement of faith here. I love this. A great statement of the faith. You see the progression here. He, he starts out as this skeptic. He starts out with this guy maybe with a little bit of doubt here. Then he's a sincere seeker here. And now he's given this statement of faith in verse 49. Nathaniel answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the son. He's making a declaration of God. Thou art the king of Israel here. Can I just say tonight, if you have questions, take your questions to Jesus. 
I'll try my best to help you answer any questions that you got. But the bottom line is you need to take them to Jesus. We all do. Amen. If you're truly, sincerely seeking the truth, come to Jesus. Listen to the Lord. Get a glimpse of the Lord. And whenever you meet Jesus, you're going to discover exactly everything what Nathaniel did, and that is he really is the Son of God. And yes, 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 he is. And I believe that with my whole heart. I would not be up here on Sunday mornings, Wednesday nights, and out professing Christ each and every day. And guess what? He wants to be our king, your king, my king. And Jesus here, of course, took this opportunity, as we see here, to teach him something. He took this opportunity to teach me something. He said, just because I saw you, you believe. But he said in verse 50, this is our key verse here. Living our life day by day, living through struggles, living through unknowns, here and there, I want you to listen to this. Jesus answered and said unto him, Behold, because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou. Thou shalt see greater things than these. I'm thankful tonight. My eyes are getting bad. Can't see that good. The body's getting older. No remedy to get the wrinkles out, even with the iron. But guess what? There's greater things coming. There's greater things coming. So the last mention that we have in this passage of Nathaniel is not just of him as a doubter, not just of him as some skeptic here, or even really his statement of faith that we see here. But what he was going to see, Jesus said that you are going to see greater things than these. In fact, in the next chapter, he's going to take Nathaniel right back to his hometown of Cana of Galilee there in that verse, chapter 2 and perform uh, that miracle, first miracle here. He's going to begin showing him greater things, but ultimately Jesus says, hereafter you're going to see heaven open." And the angels of God ascending and de descending. Ain't that what the last verse there says in 51? Upon the Son of Man. Maybe that was the Old Testament prophecy that Nathaniel was thinking about under the fig tree. I don't know. But I do know this. That the next mention that we find that we have in Nathaniel. He sees the resurrected Christ on over in chapter 21. Of John here that it was fulfilled I'm thankful that I have a God that's going to fulfill something men let us down don't we in fulfilling things but God won't and I close with this Jesus showed him much more and can I just say to every follower each and every one as I look to you tonight and to myself he not only, only wants us to have faith in him. He not only wants us to have faith in him to start, but he wants to show us greater things than these. And I think for us here at Emmanuel Baptist Church, beginning with me, the chief of all sinners, I got to keep following, keep trusting, keep listening, and keep looking. Why? Why am I going to do that? Because Jesus has greater things for all of his disciples, you and me. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God, because God is so good. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we do thank you once again for just a, another evening we could come together, Lord. Lord, my cup runneth over. It just blesses my heart when I look here and see all of my church family coming out on a Wednesday night, Lord. And, Father, I just thank so much we can look into your word, Father, and just gain knowledge more and more uh, understanding of your word, Father. That, Lord, even though we see uh, Nathaniel here, how you used him in a great and mighty way, how he wouldn't mention much, even though he, he had some doubt, even though he had, he, he had some skepticism there at the beginning, Lord. Thank the Lord he'd come to you, Lord. And, Father, I'm just so thankful for those words as you told him, Lord. Because we believest in you, Lord. Because we put our faith in you, Father. 
that we shall see greater things than we've seen even now in the days ahead. And I'm thankful for that day when we'll be at home with you, Lord. We just give you praise and glory. And now, Father, as we uh, dismiss tonight, Lord, I pray if there's one here tonight that needs to come to this altar for prayer tonight, if Sister Jenny comes to pray, I just pray, Father, that you meet that need now, Lord. Maybe there's one here tonight, Father, that's got a heavy burden on their heart, Father. I pray that just just come and just give it to Jesus. Lord, move in every what way, Father, that glorifies you, Lord. And we just thank you once again for your marvelous grace. And we ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. As we all stand. Sister Jenny, whatever what you want to play. If there's a need tonight, above all, I pray that each and every one under my voice tonight is saved. Is God dealing with you on that? Do you know for sure that you know that you know that you know? Tonight's the night. The obituary had new names in it this morning. I know people don't like to talk about death. It could be tomorrow or the next day you could see Michael Lynn Garner in there. Do you know that? But no worries because I testify to you today that I may leave you here on this earth, but I'll be home with my Heavenly Father. And just think, if you're my brother and sister in Christ, we're going to be together one day. But until then, we've got to keep rolling on and going for the Lord. Amen. All of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Appreciate each and every one of you being here again, once again tonight. And just for those that are being baptized, just remember to bring your change of clothes and a few towels Sunday morning. So just remember that, and uh, just continue to pray for those, all those on our prayer request list, and just look around tonight. Look at those faces. Look at your family. Continue to pray for all of us, each other. Amen. I'm just so thankful for the love and compassion. Amen. Anything else before we close? Well, you go ahead and dismiss us. How about that? Okay. Well, if that's, in my opinion, this is under Wayne Young. Now, if you look it up, he 
Wayne 101. Right. That's right. That's exactly right. Lord, we do thank you for loving us and trying to be one another. We just want to.